Welcome to this week's piece. So this is another item that my parents picked up for me to be able to work on while I'm visiting. Um, it's a really cool old vanity. Of course, these ones are not used anymore because the fronts are so low, you can't move a chair into them. It's just kind of the old style dressing tables that aren't very functional anymore. So what we're gonna do is turn this into a couple nightstands which is super functional and will let them live a much longer and happier life in somebody else's home. So there's some cool pieces on this, like that center drawer. You're going to see me remove that whole section there, obviously, to use the two sides as nightstands. But I have a really cool idea for that center piece. So I try not to waste anything as I'm working because... Well, if you guys have seen my shop, you know I've got spindles and legs and all kinds of crazy things in my shop. And I've used these middle drawers before on other things. So they do come in handy sometimes if you've got the space. Or even if you don't have the space, they're just cool things to have around just in case you can come up with an idea with them. So anyways, I'm just going through and taking everything apart. This had some additional back pieces that were put on later. They had very large nails in and a very thick board that wouldn't have been original to the piece, that right there. Um, so I was just using a pry bar and screwdrivers and a hammer, you know, just whatever to break things apart so that I can get into the inside of that drawer. The inside of the drawer is typically where you'll see how things are put together. Um, they're usually pretty easy to take apart. If you can just kind of see what's going on inside, you can figure it out and they'll come apart pretty easily. Now, you almost always get a little bit of damage on the sides and that's perfectly normal and you just use wood filler to go through. So these ones were done with screws, glue blocks, and then also there's a little tongue and groove situation there. So that will be a whole area to fill, but it's not a big deal. These screws were in so, so tight. I could tell that they had been run in a couple other times because the heads on them were just a little bit wonky. So I ended up going back to just using a handheld screwdriver because sometimes that's just easier. So there were a few long nails in this as well. So we had some glue, some nails, and some screws all holding this together. And then you can see kind of little grooves there for it to fit into. And then it's the same thing with the other side. But yeah, pretty easy. All in all, this took me less than probably 20 minutes, maybe 15, somewhere around there. I did think this was super cool. I found it in the very back bottom area kind of behind the drawer. So the sale date was 1943 and I just thought that was really cool. Now I tried this new trick with my Durham's putty. I mixed up a very thin batch and then I actually poured it into the trench there because this was so thick I knew I was gonna have to do multiple layers anyways because you wanna do a layer and then let it dry a bit and then you can do another one. So I just taped up the ends so that nothing would leak out and then I literally poured it in these trenches and I over poured it just a bit because you know when it's this thin, it's going to sink down and it did just that. And then after this dried, I went ahead and mixed up my regular thickness and went through and smoothed it in. And it was really cool. I, I will do this again. All the edges along the bottom of these had quite a bit of water damage, so all the veneer was bubbling and lifting on the bottoms. You can see that it used to have casters, and they took those out, and then just having it on the floor there with exposed to some kind of moisture, it messed up. So I'm just using my glue bot. I don't have my syringes with me, but this has a fine enough tip that I can really get it in there and then kind of wiggle the glue up. So it worked out really well. I'm glad I brought this with me or else I would have been in trouble or I would have had to go into the store. But so I just got it in there and then I used a piece of plastic and a piece of wood that is the length that I need 
to clamp down and get everything all smushed out and then you just clean up all the squeeze out I left these overnight and they were ready to go So as you can see, it's a really, really smooth finish. Um, I still have some missing veneer that I'm gonna have to go through and redo. So that just kind of took a bit, going back and forth between all the sides, getting things on, letting them dry, sanding things off. So, you know, I bounce around, do the drawer fronts, just kind of do what I can while I'm waiting for things to set up. Now what I'm doing to the sides here is I'm going to just do a layer of my satin poly. That's because I have so many different textures on this side. I've got raw wood, I have the sealed wood, and I have the putty. So I want to make sure my paint goes on the same all over instead of looking a bit wonky over all those different textures. This is just going to help me out later on and give me a smoother finish. And then the top centers, I just hand sanded. The finish was really, really thin and was extremely easy to come off. It didn't take me terribly long to hand sand these. And I didn't want to use the orbit orbital just because I knew I could potentially blow through the veneer. So this was the best case scenario and it turned out great. I do like to do a quick seal on my tops before I start painting. That way if I get any paint on the surface that's sanded and prepped and ready, I can just wipe it off instead of worrying about paint seeping into the raw wood. So that's what I do, I'm doing here with the satin poly. I do this with um, oils or waxes, whatever I'm finishing a top with, I will just get it sealed up for the first coat because I do multiple coats on the top. But this way it's protected from the paint if anything happens. I actually ended up taping and I know you guys know that I do not love taping but this was a really easy tape job and it just made my life easier overall when I was trying to get the black on there. I did bring a handful of decoupage papers with me so I pulled these out. The drawer fronts were just too far gone to save even though they have that cool chevron pattern with the grain um, there's just too much damage on them and I wouldn't have been able to make it look perfect so I'm going to decoupage the front of these to do that I like to start with a lighter base even though this is a dark paper you'll see it's still super super dark but the print really pops when you have a lighter base underneath so I'm just doing the fronts of these in white this is actually light khaki or pebble beach um, and then I'll get that. It has to dry fully and then you can use poly to apply your paper. So I just have a rough cut of the paper. It's not exact right now. It's a little wider, a little taller, all that jazz. Um, right now I'm just doing some folds in this top area because if I can get this cut out, I'm going to do all my cuts just slightly larger than what I actually need. Not too big because I want the prints to line up as much as possible but just slightly larger than what I need. I'll get that strip cut off and then I can put that on and then I will just work my way down the drawers. Now that I have that cut, I can take out the drawer and this will give me more room to get in and really make sure the paper folds under the edge. So here I'm adding quite a bit of poly because I wanna make sure that I can get the paper on and then I am using my fingers to press it into all the curves because you can see there's quite a bit of trim going on there and I wanna make sure that this falls in everything so that later on, once it dries, if anybody's fingernail hits it or anything hits it, it doesn't cut or rip in any of the divots that are in there. So I'm making sure that it's fully adhered on there as much as possible and then I add another layer of poly. And then I will go back underneath and make sure that it is really really stuck on on the underside as well so when the drawer slides in and out it's not going to hit anything
Drawer fronts are like hands down the easiest thing to decoupage. It's just brilliant. So I'm taking the paper, I'm lining it up to the top because that's where my cut ended for the last piece. And then I'm just, like I said, doing a rough cut on the bottom. I give myself a little bit of wiggle room so that it lines up, but I still have room to trim off the excess and get a perfect fit. So I just add my coat of poly on there, smooth the paper on. These drawers are so small, I don't have any issues getting it laid down. And then while the top of it's dry, I haven't added my second layer. I'm just using sandpaper and I'm pushing it down away from the paper. You never want to pull up because that will lift your paper up. If I was using a very thin paper, I would wait until this was fully dried before I started doing the step. But this is the 18 pound paper and it's really, really thick. So I'm fine with doing this step right now. Once those edges are super smooth, I can go ahead and add my second coat of poly and then making sure I go around all the edges to fully seal them down. And then everything else is a repeat, just doing the other section, the other drawer and getting everything on. While the paper is wet, I do find that it is easiest to just kind of poke holes through where your hardware is going to go in. Do not come up through the bottom. It will lift the paper. Always push through the top. Here's kind of the idea where I'm going. I'm liking how it is so far. I decided to just do black all over. This will be my base coat and I'm just putting it everywhere. And then since I don't love my papers just to be a stark contrast between the paint and the paper, but I wanted the overall piece to be black, I decided to just paint in the edges. And I really liked how that turned out. I don't have all my paints with me, but from my stash, I pulled patina green, relic green, light khaki or pebble beach, pastel peach, and blackboard. So I saw all those colors in this paper. Mind you, I would have loved to have some red on hand and um, a slightly different shade of green, but we do what we can with what we have. So it turned out okay, I'm pleased with it, um, but I do wish I could have had some, mostly some more red. The peach just wasn't, wasn't enough. Now around the edges, I'm adding my second coat of black and I wanna keep this wet because that's going to help me blend in the other colors. Um, I'm not worried about doing this too messily because I'm going to clean it up with the black when I'm finished. So again, a layer of black just so that it's wet and then I can work those colors around the edges of the paper. And I'm never worried if I get a little bit on the paper, I can always wipe it back and having those colors transfer on the paper a little bit also helps them blend into the sides where I'm getting it. So it kind of works in both directions like that. I'm just taking the colors, putting them on, they mix in with the black a little bit, and it just kind of melds together and turns into not this stark contrast between paper and not paper. I hope that makes sense. It's just kind of a subtle transition on this one. Usually I'll do like the bigger, wider transitions, but I was pleased with these ones because I did want to keep them the overall black.
And this is really just working back and forth with the colors, using all my brushes, using the water to keep everything wet, and then making sure that I hit all the spots to make sure everything melds well together. And you just go back and forth and play with it until you like it. So this was kind of fun. I never could use my sprayer anymore and um, I have the opportunity to do it at my parents' house because they've got a huge space for me to do it in. So I'm just adding my poly with just a dollop of black to tone it so that it doesn't do that weird cloudy cast. And then mix it up, throw it in my sprayer and it works perfectly. I just have a cheapy little sprayer. It's not anything special. It's just nothing but it it works great for top coats um i've sprayed single colors before but i don't do a lot of paint spraying because i just like painting by hand but it is marvelous for top coats it goes on a little crazy like it looks kind of orange peely but it always levels out so you'll see here it looks a little crazy but then it levels which is awesome so i do one coat I'll do a quick sand and then I'll do another coat and these guys are good to go. Oh hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades and we've got our finished nightstands. They turned out so lovely. I'm very pleased with them. Um, we of course did hand sanding on the top rounds because this veneer is just so thin. You can blow through it so quickly with the sander. So th this part was all hand sanded. Everything else was just, I mean, it's just so easy to take these old vanities and turn them into something that's useful again. Nobody sits at the little vanities that have the really low center portions. It just, they just sit and they go by the wayside and it's sad. So 
Now we have two amazing nightstands that match and you guys know that I really, really love matching set nightstands. They go very well for me. Um, I do have casters on order for these. There's little caster sections in the bottom and they're just a little bit short. So the casters will help lift them up to be a more appropriate height, not a ton, but just enough. And then of course it's not the same as like when I order on Amazon in Portland, it's so nice. I get everything like the next day or the day after it's so fast And here in the mountains. It's, it's a bit of a waiting game. So I was like, Oh man, I don't have the casters for the final thing. So sorry about that. I did get the hardware in time, thankfully, but the casters are actually supposed to be here a little later today, which is fine. I'll be able to, you know, sell them like that, but I am going to try and list these in California and see the difference. Um, when I look on their marketplace here, it, things go for much, much higher than in Portland. You guys know that I typically get my stuff for free, usually sometimes $20, um, almost never more than that because you just can't turn a profit in Portland for that price on marketplace. You have to sell on Etsy and things like that. But it'll be interesting to see if I can get these sold before I head back home. I've been here for so long <laughs> um, and I'm still gonna be here a while yet. I've got a really cool cabinet that I'm just finishing up and then a huge desk that is gonna be some work, but it'll be awesome, I think, once I'm finished. But yeah, so these turned out lovely. I'm very excited and then I'll keep you guys posted on how much more hopefully they sell for and how quick they sell. I'm, I'm kind of curious how fast things will go here. Anyways. Thank you guys for sticking it out with me. I know that it's it's not the same getting the instant responses and I love doing the, the lives with you when I first release a video for the premieres and I can't do that here, so I'm very sorry, but I'm so thankful that you're still watching and hanging out with me. And uh, I do get to all your comments as soon as I drive into town and get reception to do so. So thank you all so much. You're just incredible. Oh, and for those of you who are curious about the planner, I put all the information in the video, but I just, you guys know I'm not a professional. I'm just a girl doing furniture. And that company reached out to me. It's called Vivor, V-E-V-O-R. I'll link the planner down below again in case you need one or whatever. Um, it's still very cool. I still love it. It's only been a week since I've started using it, but it is really, really fun to use. And like I said, it makes quick work of things that would require quite a bit more sanding. So it's fun for that. But anyways, the company hasn't even asked anything about it, so. They're, it's just a cool company to work with because they just are like here and then just put it in the video. So anyways, I wanted to make sure that I put their name in the video so that they get um, credit because I had a couple of you say, oh, you didn't even say the name. I'm like, ah, I'm sorry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> so bad at this, I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, anyways, thank you all so much. I hope you had an amazing 4th of July and are just having a great summer so far. So see you next week.